like anxiety about the police pulling up and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just chilling. Um, probably gone to sleep that night. Um, yeah, woke up about three in the morning to a knock. And then yeah, I just knew it was the police that like, I could feel the energy. Yeah, they came in and they said I'm arrested for murder and that's it. So I was born in London. I lived with my mum till about 11 years old. And I started living primarily with my dad. Um, yeah, my childhood was pretty strict. My dad was a bit more lenient than my mum. And it was a good childhood. And what area was you growing up in again? Um, Peckham. And what was it like growing up in Peckham? It was rough. Um, probably the same as anywhere in London. Well, yeah, it was decent. Nice. And what about your education? Um, I was decent in school, sec first and second set between all my subjects. Yeah. Um, yes, and talk to me about the incident, I guess, that changed your life forever. Um, well, I was arrested for a murder, probably the Shulky murder, as you don't know it. I was acquitted under self-defence and found not guilty. So how did that all begin? Um, just fused as a teenager. I'm um, doing some bad stuff that I shouldn't really have been doing, making some poor decisions, so, to be honest. So when you say poor decisions, what was the first thing that happened? Um, so to my memory, I, as a young boy, I probably um, went to Lucian to try and rob phones. And yeah, that's probably how the situation started. So you robbed someone's phone, yeah? Yeah, basically. And, and then what was the backlash from that? Um, he kind of called his older brothers and then his older brothers came basically because I was standing in the same area like a donut and then yeah we basically had a fight and this is how I got the scar on my lip here. What happened? Um, the boy had a ring on his finger and as we was fighting I don't think he was really getting the better of me but just because he had the ring it's that like it's left a mark on my face. So was it a case of you robbed, you robbed someone and on the same day that these people came up to you? Yeah. And it's like, how far apart were those two instants? Probably like 20 minutes apart. 20 minutes apart. And I guess when you saw these people approaching you, did you realise what was about to happen? As a young you, I was a bit too overconfident. I was telling them it was me. That kind of, yeah, it was like they came up to me, asked who it was, and I said it was me. And then, and then what happened after that? Um, it was just a fight after that. He reacted, he punched me in my face, I punched him. You know what I'm saying? We were just squabbling. Then through the midst of everything happening, that like my friends have kind of stopped and said, "Wow, you're bleeding. That's like your lip. Look at your lip." You know what I'm saying? I guess probably for people thought I got stabbed, called them out of blood, but nah, he just had a ring. And so now you've left that scene, and then what happened? Um, I've kind of felt like um, Shoki's older brother set me up. That that's how I felt. I felt like the only person who knew where I was at that specific time was Shoki's older brother. And how old was you and how old was the, the people in the incident? I'd say I was about 14, turning 15, and the guys were about, I'd say about 18, 19, maybe. Maybe 17, turning 18. But therefore had beards that I have now. And then how did you react then? So that situation's happened, you've robbed someone, then you've had a fight, your lips got bust, then what was happening? Um, I just felt angry after that, honestly. I felt angry. Yeah, I felt angry after that. Needed that something needed to be resolved. And then what was next? Um, so a few incidents happened, but in between that, um, we've kind of gone back and forth a few times. But uh, main incident probably in Peckham. I've seen him again with my friends, and then yeah. He's come up to us and he's probably like, oh, do you know who I am? My name's Shoki. Do you remember what happened last time and stuff like that? Just giving him all the big, big ones. And yeah, nothing really happened with that situation. It was just kind of a conflict. But yeah, that's about it. And then I guess take me to the day that I guess the incident or the murder took place. Like before that, there's like a, a party I went to in Bermondsey. And boy, there was like thirty of them at like that party. There's like thirty of them. Um, 
I was with my girlfriend. I came there. So, yeah, I was going to the party with my girlfriend now. Um, well, I was meeting my girlfriend there. I met my friend first. We've gone to the party. We've seen these people. And kind of like in the midst of seeing these people, my friend's gone missing. So I've gone into the shop to try and buy a drink and stuff like that. As I've come out the shop, people are calling my government name like, oh, it's Shamar, Shamar, is that Shamar, yeah? And I've looked around and I've seen it's that Shoki's older brother and a whole lot of people, like 15, 16 people. A couple of Pekka mutes there, having a little feud, a little argument, um, trying to defuse the situation. And then I've kind of lost the plot, kind of. And I've tried to kind of said, like, if you're going to do something, do it now. And everyone's kind of paused. And then after that, that's like, everyone just ran towards me. So I've started cutting out. Is this outside, yeah? Yeah, this is outside of the party, isn't it? So I haven't even got into the party yet. You get what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. So I made it home that day anyway. Yeah, well, that was, a, that was, that was the last incident before I actually seen him at the party where he died. And so was that so this is a different day to the actual incident? Yeah, that was a different day to the actual incident. Um and then when was the next time that you crossed paths? The next time we crossed paths after that, yeah, would have been the party that he died. So talk me through the, the day and the party itself. So yeah, um the morning I woke up of the party, uh, my plan was to get two t shirts, matching t shirts for me and my girlfriend. So um yeah, I've gone to West End that early morning, got two t shirts, come back. Um, shout out my girlfriend, she's preparing for the party, helping, whatever. I've gone to drop the t-shirts off, asked if they needed anything else, help. They didn't really need my help. Gone to meet my friends, chilling, getting some pre-drinks. And that's about it. Gone gone to the party, um, chilling in the party for about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes max. Um, yeah, chilling in the party and then we're just hearing loud, Screams of girls like, oh, Shoki's hair, Shoki's hair, like kind of fan behavior. Um, I'm kind of confused because I'm thinking that like, I'm two seconds away from my area. Like, you're from Lucian, like, what are you doing at a party in Peckham? You know what I'm saying? Like, especially like my close, like my girlfriend's close friends' party. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he's ended up coming. Uh, me and my friend have decided to leave and go towards his nans to get. I can't remember what we was going to get. I can't. I can't remember what we was going to get. But we walked to, to go to his nans. As we got to the front door, we bumped into Shoki coming into the party. You know what I'm saying? My friend's kind of startled. Like he's kind of froze up. Uh, my man's like, "Yeah, what are you yeah?" And then, yeah, he backed out his knife. I've gone to the kitchen. When he's bucked out his knife, what have you thought? I didn't really have a thought process, you know. It was just more of a reaction. You know what I'm saying? Like, I more reacted, gone to the kitchen, got the kitchen knife, and as I've come back, he's, like, literally right at the kitchen door. You know what I'm saying? So I've just swung, swung twice, and then, like, he's kind of stumbled back towards the front door, pushed him through the front door, locked the front door, and went through the back. And what was everyone's reaction at that time? Like, I feel like the party was still kind of going on. So until he went outside and he started bleeding on the floor, I don't think anyone really realised what happened. Because it was like, in the spare of the moment kind of thing. It wasn't in front of everybody. It wasn't in front of the main party. It was that right at the front door. You get what I'm saying? Literally. And that's happened. Then what have you done there? Um, I've walked over the back garden and I've just made my way home. Literally. What's worrying through your head now that you, that, that instance happened? Funny enough, the first thing that came to my head was self-defense. Funny enough. But, but yeah, I, I didn't really have much thoughts, much thought process. Um, obviously, I didn't know he had passed away yet. So, yeah, I didn't. Not many thoughts, not, not many negative thoughts come across my mind after that. I was on my way home. And then by the time I got home, obviously, I've seen all the RIP posts. And that's when it's kind of hit me that, bro, that my man's dead. You know what I'm saying? And when you're seeing them, I guess them, what's happening in your head? Um, more like disappointment to family, what Joe's going to be like, you know what I'm saying? What, I don't know, I was kind of complacent with the fact that I was in that situation, 
if you know what I mean. Like, I don't know, it just felt, it felt, it felt right, to be honest. Like, it didn't feel wrong, if you know what I mean. It felt like what I was going through, I was meant to go through. And how old are you back then, this? Uh, 15. 15, yeah. Yeah, 15 still. And so, day one goes past, and then what, what are people saying? Are people messaging you? Or what's the situation now? Um, yeah, a whole load of death threats, a whole load of messages, a whole load of people that knew me and probably trying to expose certain pieces of information that they felt like was valuable, but yeah, like, it was all to show me who really fought with me, honestly, that was it, that was it. And then, when did the police get involved? Um, I'll say the police got involved on the 7th, the 7th, yeah, the 7th I got arrested, that's when I got arrested, the 7th, and he died on the 5th of August. Tell me about the day that you got arrested, what happened there? So, uh, the day I got arrested, um, just a normal day being inside, like, still kind of fresh, still got, like, anxiety about the police pulling up and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just chilling. Um, probably gone to sleep that night. Um, yeah, woke up about three in the morning to a knock. And then, yeah, yeah I just knew it was the police that like, I could feel the energy. Yeah, they came in and they said, I'm arrested for murder, and that's it. What, what did your family say at that stage? Like, at that stage, my family was all aware that something had happened. So I don't think they were surprised when the police came, if you know what I mean. That the reaction was before the police came, if you get me, because they knew what happened before the police came. Uh, what, what did they say to you? When, or did they, it was a case they knew, but they didn't know? Like, honestly, uh, like, I know my mum was probably upset with the situation, but happy with the outcome. And so with my dad, upset about the situation, but happy with the outcome. Car. Yeah, it could have been flipped on both sides. I could have been dead. He could have been alive. You get what I'm saying? But it was just about he was quicker. So now you've been arrested. Uh, what's happening now? Um, so, yeah, I'm in the station two, three days, interviews, non-stop, probably like six, seven interviews. Um, I've got reminded to a secure unit in Bristol. And I've gone court, then I've got some reminded to a secure unit in Bristol. And yeah, I'm just in the secure unit from then. And then slowly getting the pieces of evidence and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And what's going through your head as, as a 15 year old in a secure unit? Um, like after the after the three days in the police station, I was kind of glad to be in the secure unit. Honestly, like the image I had a joy in my head, the secure unit didn't portray that. Like it kind of looked like a a kid's home that you get locked down in, your door locks. But yeah, that was about it. I was kind of happy to be in there, not the police station. So yeah, it wasn't the worst of experiences. And then I guess how long was you in this secure unit for? Six months. And you started getting evidence from the trial while you was in there, all the yeah, paperwork? Yeah, within that two, three months of being in there, I started getting evidence that like, a bit more every week or every two weeks. And talk to me about what, what paperwork you was reading the scene. Um, a lot of paperwork, like a lot of statements from people at the party, a lot of statements from Shoki's party, like the people that was on his side, a lot of statements from people that was on my side. Yeah, just a whole load of things. Which I guess is a bit mind blowing to me because when I'm speaking to a lot of people in that world, yeah, the number one rule is you don't talk to the police. Definitely, and that was a big point for me, realizing how fake this street life is, in my career anyway. Like from 15, I knew that a lot of people don't stand on what they mean. Yeah. And then when you're reading the statements, what were the statements saying, and who who was saying what? Um, just a lot saying that yeah, S done it. Um how he done it, um, describing hand motions. Um, yeah, that's it. Like, anything you can think of, anything you can think of. The things that shouldn't people shouldn't be saying that people would say, yeah. And when you're reading these statements, what's going through your head? That, I don't know, I just, that, I just didn't believe in the street stuff no more, honestly. Like, I felt like they was meant to be the savages standing on what they're saying, and they wasn't. 
And then tell me about when you went to court. Oh, when I went to court. Yeah. How long? How long was your court case? My court case. What the trial? So my trial was. I think it was four weeks. You know, four to five weeks, and I think it took them an extra week to come with the verdict. But yeah, trial was a bit hectic. Traveling from Bristol to London every day was a bit. Yeah. So talk me through, I guess, the whole trial from the start to finish. Um. So they've picked the jury. Um, I've given my plea of not guilty. And then I think it was for the prosecution to serve their evidence. They didn't really have much evidence. They had no um, clothing, no knife, no CCTV. You know, just character witness statements. That's it, witness statements. That's all they had. Um, Did you say you was confident going to the court case? Uh, I'll say about 60-40, 60% being confident. I was confident because of the evidence that they had. I didn't think they had enough evidence to prove that I intended to kill him. Yeah, I don't think they had, the evidence wasn't pretty strong. But yeah, it was just about me proving my point and getting my side of the story across clearly. And what was the strongest evidence that I was throwing? Strongest evidence. The strongest evidence was probably my family saying that I came home and said I'd done something. That was probably the strongest evidence. But how did you feel when you heard that? I'm a bit upset, but as I get older, you can't blame no one. You put someone in a... Uh, a, a dodgy situation you don't know what the outcome is going to be in it literally and I guess talk me through the highs and the lows of the trial for you um I guess the high in the, the high in the trial for me was on like the second day they brought out um the suspected murder weapon and it had Shokin's blood on it and I knew for 100% sure that, that that wasn't a murder weapon so from that day I was kind of 100% sure that that was one of their knives. And that would have come out positively for me if that was found true. Yeah. But yeah, in the end of it was um, his brother's fingerprints on a knife and Shoki's blood on the knife. So yeah, he must have been touching himself and then realised, oh shit, I got a knife. Then yeah, his brother must have taken it and tried to hide it or something like that. But yeah, about two knives got found, both of the brother's fingerprints and one with Shoki's blood on it. And what would you say was the lowest part of the trial? Nah. I guess the lowest part of the trial was um, seeing the, the prosecution make up lies or narratives to suit what they're trying to say to try and make me look even worse than the situation actually was. So yeah, that was probably the worst part of the trial. And um, talk me through the verdict. The verdict was not guilty under self-defense, um, basically meaning that it was a lawful killing, that I defended myself, literally. But what what reaction did you have at that stage, or what went for you? Oh, I, I, in that stage, I was actually in the secure unit, so I wasn't actually in court, because for the verdict, um, they was trying to find out for about a week or so, so they didn't want to keep sending me from Bristol to court from Bristol to London every day. So yeah, I was just waiting for the verdict. They come through. I think I was in English, to be precise, English education. Called me, telling me my solicitor wants to speak to me. I was thinking that like, maybe this is some new evidence or something, or maybe they got something bad to tell me. Then, yeah, they said they got my verdict. Um, yeah, once they said I got my, they got my verdict, I was just sitting in a room waiting for them to bring my verdict. Heart pounding, like, fuck. Yeah, and then um, the juror stand, stood up and told me, yeah, not guilty on the self-defense. Most amazing feeling in the world, literally. That must have been, ins- yeah, like you said, bro, that must have been insane that day. Yeah, I don't think I can match that feeling ever again, honestly. What was you What was you looking at time-wise? Uh, personally, going on the case facts, I don't think I would have got murdered. Ever. Like, even if I got found guilty I don't think I would have got murdered like, just the fact that he got caught with his knife and there was fingerprints on it 
Yeah, so I would have got Mansour or something. So I probably would have said 15, maybe 12 do half, something like that. I don't think I would have got like a 25 or a 17 do the whole stretch. And was you nervous every day in that secure unit? Mm, nervous as in what, in terms of my case? Or nervous as in being in a secure unit? I guess in terms of the case and what, what could happen? Not really, you know. There was like a few people that were that got sentenced for murder and they got manslaughter and their situation was a lot more different to mine. Like a guy's a guy's stepdad um was abusing his mum and he and his brother stabbed him up multiple times. He's died and he got twelve new six. You know what I'm saying? And that was just because of the fact that he was abusing his mother, you know what I mean? So you put someone in a life or death situation, I kind of knew that my case was going to be a bit different to his, but using the facts, I should be fine. You know what I mean? And then you've been released and come home, and what was life like then? I kind of thought it was going to go back to normal, you know, but it never did, honestly. It never did. It never went back to normal. I never moved back to Peckham like I was meant to, like I thought I was going to. I never went back to my original home after that. So yeah, it's just been getting back to reality and trying to find my normal again. Yeah, so was there any repercussions when you come home? Um, no, no repercussions, just more death threats than anything else. That's it, more death threats. Um, well, it give me context to the death threats, what are people saying? Um, you're gonna get what's coming to you one day. Probably you're dead. Probably you're a snitch. All of these things, fam. But yeah, just, just words. Just words. How did that affect you? Because at fifteen, sixteen, here, and that's I'm pretty sure it's not good for your mental health. I feel like it affected me for a while until I realized people were just gonna say anything to suit their story. You know what I mean? So whatever story they were trying to push, whatever information they felt that was true or not. They were just going to push it to the front of the story. Push it to the front of the line, like. And would you, how would you say that instance changed your life? Or your mindset? Um, I'm a bit more calculated on where I go. Uh, I'm kind of clued up on this street stuff. It don't really, don't really mean nothing. You don't really get nothing positive from this street life. It doesn't make you bad to murder somebody. Anyone can do it, literally. It's just about making decisions, honestly, on what you want to do and what you don't want to do. That's it. And that's what, what advice would you give to guess people who are in that road life at 15, 16 now? Yeah. Be yourself. Be yourself. No matter if it's right or wrong, because you're not going to regret being yourself. Honestly, just be yourself, be true to yourself. Whatever you really want to do, chase it. Don't chase it because your friend is doing it. Don't chase it because you see something on TV. Just do it because you genuinely, genuinely want to do it. And yeah, just take time, reflect on what you want to do and live your life the way you want to live it. And if you had one wish, what would that be? If I had one wish... <laughs> If I had one wish, I'd probably just uh, better my family's life in general, financially, health-wise. Uh, honestly, I'd just build an empire for my family. That's what I would do if I had one wish. And where are you today in your life? What's going on there with you? Um, I'm going to uni, studying music production. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to build my life back. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm doing music, trying to release a couple songs, just trying to find my sound at the moment. I feel like I found my sound, but it's just um, the direction I want to go. So yeah, it's just about releasing music, getting better with my production skills, and yeah, that's it. And before we finish, yes, is there anything that you want to say? Um, not really. Um, you lot might know me as SNRS. I'm gonna be changing my name to so many L's. So if you see so many L's, it's me. Follow it on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Type in so many L's. 